So welcome back to another rebuild here on NBA 2K25 Next Gen. In today's video, we are back with another episode of our Trading Every Player Rebuild series, and today it's going to be the Houston Rockets. The Rockets have really emerged themselves as one of the best young cores in all of basketball. Now, unfortunately today, we are not going to get to use a single player that is on this Rockets team. The way these videos work, if you are not familiar, basically before year one kicks off, I have to trade away the entire Rockets team. Of course, I have no say as my eyes will be closed while making all trades. And by the end of the video, the goal is to win a championship. And of course, throughout this process, no members of the current Rockets are allowed back. I wouldn't say that Houston has a superstar necessarily, but again, they have a lot of really young talent that is going to have a lot of trade value. So I have really high hopes for this one. Of course, before we get into it, as always, let me know any other rebuild ideas down below in the comment section. Open and new series ideas. I know many of you guys have been commenting some, and I really do appreciate it. So continue to let me know those ideas, along with any other video ideas down there. So excited for this one today. I've been really enjoying this series. Let's get into it. Now, I believe at the time that I am currently recording this, as things are today, I think the Rockets are like a top three seed in a obviously very good Western Conference. So, you know, we just talked a little bit about how maybe they don't have a superstar, but there's a lot of really good quality players on this team. So, again, I have relative high hopes in terms of the return we're going to get uh, on some of these deals. So let's just kind of kick things off, I guess, with Alperin Shen Yun. I'm going to actually pair him up with Dylan Brooks. And the reason for doing that is because he's still on his rookie CL contract. So he's making just under five and a half million dollars. If I pair him up with a bigger contract like Brooks, there is likely a case that I'm going to get more offers. See here, we get 15 of these. So eyes are closed. We will scroll through randomly all 15 of these. And again, we will stop right about now. And it is going, oh no. Oh no. Okay. Shingun going to Golden State. Him and Dylan Brooks for Buddy Heal, Draymond Green. Just curious. What are some of, oh my God. I would have legitimately been so so fucking happy that or jaron jackson jr or jalen john i mean literally the majority of these here would have been better than zion oh 2k what are you doing today man oh good lord all right draymond buddy healed going to be the first two we are trading for fred van vliet going to be up next 30 years of age 83 overall obviously an nba champion unfortunately today we are not going to be able to get his services with this group because we are going to be trading him to the Portland Trailblazers, along with a first-round pick. Oh, fucking Christ alive. Well, we had high hopes, and uh, so far, I'm not loving either of these deals. I don't think they're necessarily really good at all. We're going to do Thompson and Green next. Okay, there's actually only four offers for them, so we'll do Thompson and can't do Robert Williams. We'll do Thompson and Jock Lawndale. Again, a lot of these guys are you know young, so they have not, or they're not making a lot of money, so trying to pair them up into twos typically can be beneficial. So... Stop. And there's going to be Mikel Bridges and a first round pick from the New York Knicks. Again, not the greatest trade in the world. Jalen Green develops really, really well in this game, but uh, I can kind of live with it, I guess. How about Thompson and Green? Well, there's only three offers here. Four offers, whatever. Shit. Okay. Thompson and Steven Adams. Now we got 11 offers. Again, just kind of adding a few more into here. You never know. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to stop right now and we're going to go one to the left. And that is going to be Avica Zubats and Derek Jones Jr. Or it would have been Kobe Bufkin and Clint Capella. I have about 85 centers on this team right now. At least that's what it feels like. So we're definitely going to have to get creative there uh, at some point. Jabari Smith Jr. is going to be up next. I really haven't loved Jabari Smith Jr.'s career so far. I thought he'd be a little bit better for a third overall pick, but just hasn't been so far stop and it is going to be cam thomas and zyra williams from the brooklyn nets all right i can live with that cam thomas is a bucket we definitely need some scoring on this team he's obviously going to provide that for us so slowly but surely making our way through this roster we're gonna do cam whitmore up next him and uncle jeff jeff green 38 years of age still going strong in the nba so we got 20 offers for these two right here um probably not gonna get a superstar or a star or anything like that and it's going to be Bobby Portis, AJ Green, and another first round pick. I do not like dealing away this many draft picks. God damn. So many big men with this team. It's almost ridiculous at this point. All right. Aaron Holiday, Jay Sean Tate. And then I think that should be it. I'm going to do Holiday and Reed Shepard together. Uh, we have eight offers. Reed Shepard actually has a lot of value. I probably should have traded him earlier and on, but we did not do that. So Stop. And it is going to be Trey Mann, Nick Richards from the Charlotte Hornets. Again, another big man with Nick Richards. Not necessarily needed, but it's kind of how these go. Um, I don't trade the two-way players. I want to make sure Jay Sean Tate is the final current Houston Rocket uh, before we go ahead and make this trade. And it looks like he is. So we're going to have a lot of depth, a lot of 80 overalls. We're not going to necessarily have a ton of firepower offensively, but we got a lot of quality role players. Stop. And it is going to be John Conchar in a second. Again, pretty 
pretty useless deal in my opinion. Okay, I think we should be all set. Of course, we also have the rules set in place that we can't make any other deals after we trade away the entire roster, at least until the first offseason. But I believe we have finalized all of the deals we are going to make. We are going to have to get pretty creative in terms of moving around some positions. And I'll see you guys at the rotation. Okay, this thing is going to be interesting. This is a season that is probably not going to be fantastic in terms of record, but I think we've gone ahead and done this rotation the best way we possibly could have. So hear me out on all of the explanations I'm about to give you. Now, here's what the starting five is going to look like. Trey Mann, Cam Thomas, I moved Bridges to the three, Draymond at the four, Zubats at the five. Probably not a lot of surprises in there, one through five. Now, I will let you know that Trey Mann was actually the only listed point guard that we traded for. He's going to start because I think he has a lot of potential. I think he's an absolute bucket. And I ultimately do think he is our best option at that point guard spot. Now, the backup point guard is going to be our sixth man. It is going to be Buddy Heald. And for those of you saying, well, Buddy Heald is not a point guard, I 1000% agree with you. But I attempted to move many players to the backup point guard spot. And all of their overalls took a hit except for Buddy Heald. So he is going to be running the backup one. He is going to be in a sixth man capacity. And that will likely only last for one season. We got DeAndre Ayton here at the backup center spot, Bobby Portis Jr., the backup four, Derek Jones Jr., the backup three, and finally AJ Green, just because I think we need a little bit more offense uh, really everywhere, to be honest with you, and obviously AJ Green, just a fantastic shooter at that backup two guard spot. Oh, good, Call of Duty updated, still don't play it. Uh, but unfortunately, like Robert Williams is just not really going to have minutes, same with Zaire Williams, John Conchar, Nick Richards. It's, you know, tr terribly unfortunate, and it's certainly something we're going to Go ahead and fix this offseason just because too much depth at some point. So um, that's what we're working with for now. I think we made the decisions pretty much the best way we possibly could have. And I think the one good thing we kind of have is a decent amount of this core that we have locked into place is under contract for multiple seasons. So that'll definitely be beneficial. I will see you guys at the end of year number one. Our first season is officially over, and for that, I am pretty thankful. Now, I didn't think this team was going to be a serious contender, but I certainly did not have 37 wins on my bingo card. So, 37 and 45, that is the final record. It's not great. It's not going to be a playoff team. It probably isn't even a play-in team. Luke is your MVP. Jared McCain, Rookie of the Year. Russell Westbrook. Victor Wembanyama. Amen Thompson, who we, of course, traded to the Los Angeles Clippers. Damian Lillard, Clutch Player of the Year in 63 wins. And Jason Kidd is your coach of the year. Um, I'm just waiting for this season to be over. It's it's basically been, I would say, nicely the season from hell for us. It's just not been good. You can see we're a 12 seed here uh, in the Western Conference. So another thing to note, of course, I mentioned this in a lot of these videos, but just in case you do not know this, I do not turn off previously traded draft picks in these. So I'm not exactly sure what the Rockets pick situation is. I can't imagine it's absolutely terrible. Most rebuilding teams are, you know, rebuilding teams tend to have a decent amount of draft capital. So uh, I'd like to say we have our first round pick this year, but of course we will fact check that uh, in just a second. So there are the numbers again. I'm not going to go into it too deep because it doesn't really fucking matter to be honest with you. Let's sim through these playoffs. It is going to be a Knicks and a Thunder Finals. That'd actually be pretty entertaining. I can't lie. And it is going to be the New York Knicks winning in seven in Carl Anthony Towns, Finals MVP. Just saying, be a pretty big, uh, pretty cool story if, if that were to happen. All right. Going to take a look here at some retirements. Mike Conley got traded to the Cavs. Horford, of course, got his ring with the Celtics. Two guys from that 2007 draft class. Only one got a ring. Very sad. All right, let's head into the draft lottery. So that Wizards pick's definitely protected. I, I am going to honor that. Now, it says the Nets have our pick at number nine. I'm just going to check all of these protections because I want to make sure I get it, you know, correct. I'm not going to steal a pick. I'm not going to also give up a pick if I don't have to. So uh, we are currently picking at number nine, which I'm assuming means we have our draft pick. Of course, the Wizards pick is also sitting right there. So maybe I actually don't really have to fact check anything. Uh, Ime Udoka ultimately is not coaching for his job, but if we have another season like the one we just did, we are going to have to make a pretty tough decision. So I'll keep him now. He's a good head coach. He has good ratings. We have the ninth overall pick. Of course, it is our own. We also have number nine in round two, along with number 25. So uh, we have a decent amount of depth, as of course, we have been over several, several times. Uh, so I am going to consider all options. What I am go definitely going to do uh, is trade away the second round picks. This is not a video where I think those are going to be necessary. All right, we are going to consider a trade. If not, I'll see you in the draft. We, of course, almost traded for him before year one kicked off. Of course, we ended up missing out on that deal, but we are not going to be missing this time. Pulling off a blockbuster here with the New Orleans Pelicans and landing ourselves a superstar in Zion Williamson. So I know it's maybe not a ton to give up on paper. It is certainly going to hurt losing our starting front court, but given the depth that we do have, I'm relatively confident that we'll be able to pull off a deal and replace Zubots. Of course, Zion will slide into that starting four. So I'm excited about this trade. I think it makes a lot of sense for us just getting a guy who can do a lot 
lot of different things well in Zion Williamson. And of course, here in 2K, we do not play with injuries on, so Zion will be playing the full 82 games. So skipping over the 2025 draft, Bobby Porter is going to be entering unrestricted free agency. Certainly will be qualifying Cam Thomas, Trey Mann, and then Zaire Williams uh, was not in the rotation, but I'm not going to let him go for nothing. So we will qualify him here. And then what other major free agents do we really have? It doesn't look like it's a ton. So uh, we don't really have any money anyways. I was not going to let Cam Thomas walk out the door, but we're just going to pay pretty much all these guys because why the hell not, right? What, what am I really losing out on here uh, if I don't pay any of them? So we're going to go ahead and then get Trey Mann back as well, who's looking for about $13, $14 million annually. Definitely not a terrible contract. So I like this quite a bit. I think we've had a really fun start to this offseason, but we are definitely not done making upgrades. Oh, wow. That was a bit of a surprise. Okay, well, we have added ourselves a new point guard, and that would be DeJounte Murray. We gave up Buddy Heald, Derek Jones Jr., and Nick Richards, along with, you know, a little bit of a trade exception in there. Not a single draft pick, and we now have a pretty solid point guard. So uh, I will say, I think at this point in his career, DeJounte Murray's defense probably gets overhyped a little bit. At one point early on, he was definitely known as a solid defensive guard. Uh, I think that ship has kind of sailed a little bit. But here in 2K, he has an A-rated perimeter defense and uh, certainly not necessarily the worst idea in the world next to a guy like Cam Thomas, who you know, might not be the best defensive player. So he's a very welcome addition. I think he's going to fit well with this group. Uh, now we're going to look for a little upgrade at our center spot. Oh, wow. Okay, Miami is willing to trade Bam out of bio. I am certainly willing to take him. All right, we've pulled off another blockbuster. DeAndre Ayton, John Conchar, Jose Alvarado, who we did get in that deal with the New Orleans Pelicans, but ultimately we already had Trey Mann at the point guard spot. Of course, added DeJounte Murray, so Jose Alvarado was kind of one of the odd man out. And then we included two first-round picks, and just like that, we got a star defensive center. So welcome to the team, Bam. It's going to be him and Robert Williams. It's a one-two punch there. Going to be Zion, Bobby Portis Jr., Mikel Bridges, Zaire Williams, Cam Thomas, A.J. Green, finally DeJounte Murray, and Trey Mann. So, you know, in one offseason, we've pretty much significantly improved not only the identity of this team, just the talent and the depth that we really do have. So I like it quite a bit. I think we are in a thousand percent better spot than we were just a season ago. Uh, and I think the possibilities are really endless right now. So I'll see you guys at the start of year number two. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm feeling pretty good right now. And honestly, everything on paper, at least, is looking very, very solid as we approach our second season here in Houston. Here's how it's going to shake out. DeJounte Murray, Cam Thomas, Mikel Bridges, Zion Williams, and Bam Adebayo, one through five. I mean, just clear cut, million percent better than where we were just a season ago. What is that in terms of new starters? That is three out of five new starters. So awesome. Trey Mann going to be my sixth man off the bench. Of course, got Bobby Porter's Jr. back. Zaire Williams slides to the backup three. Finally, in the rotation now, I will add. Rob Will going to be the backup five. Of course, good to see him in the rotation as well. And finally, A.J. Green rounding it out at the backup shooting guard spot. So no doubt playoffs are certainly a goal. I think they are you know, not necessarily a lofty goal. I think maybe top three seed would be a lofty goal, but I expect to be in the mix at a minimum. So I'll see you guys at the end of year number two. I wouldn't say year two was great by any means, but it was certainly better than what we did in year one. Now, 50 and 32 is the final record. Certainly going to be a playoff team. I don't know if we're necessarily a true contender, but we, of course, will find that out momentarily. Now, Luka Doncic does win a second straight MVP. Cooper Flagg is in Charlotte. He's your rookie of the year. Hartenstein, sixth man of the year. I'm not going to lie. I actually almost traded for him. Not in, you know, over Bam. I, of course, would take Bam 10 times out of 10 over Hartenstein, but he was up to like an 86 overall. And, uh, Probably wasn't going to cost too much to acquire him, but of course, pretty happy with Bam. Wemby Nyama, your deep boy. Jarris Walker, most improved. LaMelo Ball, clutch player of the year. And 66 wins gives Jason Kidd back-to-back -back coaches of the year. All right, we're going to end up as the four seed here. We got Minnesota in round one. Not necessarily my favorite matchup in the world, but it is what it is. And then here's a look at the East. Okay, let's dive into some stats real quick. See how everybody performed. You know, it seems like we're a really well-balanced attack. Ultimately, six guys, damn near seven in double figures in terms of points per game, but... You know, I really do like the way this team kind of fits together. So we'll find out. All right, Minnesota here. Uh, of course, led by Anthony Edwards. You know, he is a superstar in this league, no doubt in my mind. You got Julius Randle, Rudy Gobert, some nice complimentary players. So um, this is not an easy first round matchup. It's pretty hard to find an easy first round matchup in the West these days. We are currently 2 2 with Minnesota. We go up 3 2, and we do close them out in the fourth, excuse me, fourth seed, eight seed Warriors actually knock off the 66 win Mavericks in round one. So we're actually going to have home court advantage for a second straight round, which is, you know, fantastic news. I forgot we traded Shengun over to Golden State. So that's a pretty nice one-two punch. Of course, a lot of nice complimentary players here with Golden State as well. Steph is pushing 40 at this point, but he is still an absolute superstar. So yeah, this one's not going to be easy. 
Maybe it is. We went in five. Okay. I, I want to you know personally thank the Golden State Warriors because I think Luka and the Mavericks would have kicked the shit out of us. So fine by me. All right. Us against Jokic here. They somehow add Trey Young. And they, who did you, did you trade Michael Porter Jr. for Trey Young? Because Jamal Murray's coming off the bench, which is an interesting decision. My next question would be how did he not win six man of the year? I thought he would certainly be in the conversation for that. But um, yeah, well, shit, this is not going to be easy. No doubt about it. Two of the best passers in the league right now in Trey Young and Jokic, of course, now on the same team. Not a lot of defense there, but you get the point. We're down 3-2 right now. We end up getting bounced in six. All right, you know what? Western Conference Finals doesn't feel like necessarily uh, a, a bad ending to the season. I mean, we ran into a buzzsaw there in the Denver Nuggets, but... They're winning all, no surprise there. Well, that actually, you know, weirdly enough, feels like a really bad series for Jokic. I mean, anytime you have a triple-double, no matter what the points, rebounds, and assists are, it's hard to say that's bad. But given his standard and what he's done, that doesn't look like a great series for him, which is crazy to say. All right, LeBron James, Chris Paul went to the Celtics, remain ring chasing at its finest. Lowry, DeMar DeRozan also calling it a career. Oh, wow, was that Spolstra? Oh, my God, he's been in the league for 30 years. I don't know. I mean, I guess he just because he looks and probably is still relatively young, but my God, that is crazy. Um, okay, draft lottery time. I don't think we're supposed to have that Wizards pick. I'm pretty sure it's protected here in the 2026 draft. Uh, and as much as I would maybe like to take advantage of it, it is at number six. And as long as it is you know, still protected, I'm going to probably give it back to them because I'm not going to you know cheat in these videos or anything. So let me check the protections on that real quick. I'll be right back. Unfortunately, 2K never gets the protections right on the draft picks, and uh, it kind of is going to suck for us. I'll just read it to you real quick. Washington's first round pick to New York, which obviously we traded for in the Mikel Bridges deal, protected for selections 1 through 10 in 2025 and 1 through 8 in 2026. Now, this is obviously at number 6, meaning the Wizards get to keep their draft pick as unfortunate as it is. If Washington has not conveyed a first round pick to New York, aka us right now, by 2026, then Washington will instead convey its 2026 second round pick and and 2020, 2027 second round pick. We get two second round picks is, is the long story short here. And uh, as much as I would love to have that sixth overall pick, I'm not going to take too much advantage of uh, 2K stupidity. So uh, I don't need either of these seconds. We have enough depth. And again, these draft picks aren't really going to do much, but they're not going to be helpful either, I guess. Uh, we do have some free agents. I know that. They're all going to be unrestricted. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Robert Williams is going to be paid. I am also going to pay Mikel Bridges, who has... Really, Denver, he beat us in the West Finals and you still want to trade for our guys? Kind of annoying. All right, all three of these guys are going to be brought back. Ultimately, I don't really think we're too far away. Uh, I don't necessarily rule out a you know somewhat big trade. Uh, I think anything and everything is pretty much on the table, but uh, I'm definitely not going to force the issue too much because we're pretty damn good. We're going to look to make a little upgrade here at the shooting guard spot. Ultimately, I don't think there's anything wrong with Cam Thomas, but unfortunately, it just doesn't really seem like he fits super well with us. That could just be a, you know, a combination of many things, maybe the balanced offensive attack. But ultimately, I think Shaden Sharp's a little bit of an upgrade at this point in his career. So ignore the fact that we also just re-signed AJ Green and then immediately traded him. These videos aren't realistic. You get the point. So uh, we now basically need to find ourselves a new backup shooting guard. Garrison Matthews. Kevin Herter's sitting here. Yeah, unfortunately, a lot of these guys are, you know, kind of older, which means there's going to be some pretty not so great regression. Uh, but I obviously have to pick one of them. So could also look here. And yeah, no, these aren't great at all. Who is this? Um, all right. We're just going to go with Kevin Herter, you know, kind of replacing another decent shooter and AJ Green off the bench. It's going to be our 10th and final guy. Not the end of the world. All right, that is going to be it for our final trade. Uh, I think this team clearly has enough talent to win it all. And uh, I'll see you guys at the rotation at the start of year three. Now, relatively speaking, I would say last season was successful. Of course, we came off a season in year one where we ended up winning, what, 37 games, missing the playoff in its entirety. And then in year two, we ended up making the West Finals. Now, of course, the goal in these videos is to win a championship. So this offseason made, I wouldn't say anything crazy in the trade department. Of course, Shane Sharp is a welcome addition to this team and maybe, I don't want to say a better fit, but I think a nice overall upgrade just as a whole as a player. So he's going to pair up with DeJounte Murray in our backcourt. Of course, still got Bridges here at the three. Zion's up to a 94, which is great. I needed him to take over as a complete superstar if we want any chance of winning a championship. Still got Bam at the five. Bench unit's pretty damn elite with Trey Mann as my sixth man, Robert Will, the backup center spot, Bobby Portis, Zaire Williams, and finally Kevin Herter, who is certainly our lowest overall and will only be playing 10 minutes a night. So championships obviously in the cards uh i think it is certainly a possibility and hopefully a strong one at that so i'll see you guys at the end of the final regular season what a fantastic way to wrap up year three now we do have a new mvp here in nicole Jokic, certainly a familiar award for him we go 70 and 12 awesome 
by far our best record yet. This 20 games, I think, more improvement, so awesome. Cameron Boozer, Rookie of the Year. Hartenstein, sixth man. Wemby Nyama, third straight. Depoy, Gordon Mean, most improved. Also, what were the numbers on Wemby? Jesus Christ. Uh, Jokic also wins Clutch Player of the Year. And Ime Udoka, our head honcho, winning Coach of the Year. Okay, we're a one seed. Finally, we are hopeful that we are the favorites. And I think that is a safe bet as we were, what, 16 games up on the entire league? That is fucking nuts. All right, here are the numbers. Zion Williamson, Shaden Sharp, Murray, Bridges, Adebayo, Mann, Portis, Williams, Williams, and then Herter. Rebound's going to be Bam. Assist's going to be Murray. Okay, us and the Sacramento Kings here in round one. Added Jalen Williams. Simone is still here. I think we're clearly better. I'm not terribly worried about this one at all. We end up winning in five. Now, moving on to Wemby and the Spurs, who have added an old friend in Jabari Smith. Of course, Stephon Castle. John Collins off the bench. Wow. Okay, you know what? They have the best player in the series. I'm not going to deny that, but I think we're a much better team as we sweep them. Okay, Minnesota, the team we actually beat in year number one. They have uh, not changed a lot. They still got Gobert. He's now coming off the bench in favor of Daniel Gafford, but just really progression for Dillingham. It seems like McDaniels went up a few overalls, but pretty consistent throughout this rebuild. We split the first two at home, win game three and game four on the road, and we win the series in five, and we are taking on the Boston Celtics here in the NBA Finals. Okay, the Celtics are pretty damn good. Uh, Drew Holiday is no longer here or in the starting lineup. It is Peyton Pritchard, who has been a walking bucket this season. And uh, yeah, the dynamic four here are uh, not going to be easy. So, shit, what is this depth that they have? And where are you getting this kind of money? This is not going to be easy. Uh, even if the Celtics won, you know, 40-some-odd game. Okay, maybe it is going to be easy. I don't really know. Okay, we win in five. And DeJounte Murray, your finals MVP. I'll take it. I will 1,000% take it. Awesome. All right. This was a very interesting rebuild because heading into this video, I had a lot of hopes that we would start out with like a fantastic, not a fantastic team, but a, you know, a decently solid team. And not to say we didn't, but we just didn't get anywhere near what I expected. And of course, year one was a disaster, relatively speaking, and then had a fantastic first offseason, cleaned it up in offseason number two. And then, of course, the championship team came together in year three. So I enjoyed this one quite a bit. I hope you guys did as well. Of course, we're slowly but surely making our way through this rebuild series along with the Curry era rebuild. So down for whatever. Let me know any other video ideas in the comment section. So that's it for me. As always, thanks so much for watching. I love you guys. I'll catch you guys all in the next one.